This presentation is about listeners and speakers, and it will focus specifically on active listening and how to avoid distractions while listening to a presentation. First off, we must distinguish between hearing and listening, as those are two very different things. Hearing is the passive process, and it's where you perceive sound. For instance, if you're at home, you're studying for an exam, you might have your television on softly in the background. Well, you can hear the noise coming from the television, but you don't specifically hear what is being said. So that's hearing. Listening is a conscious act. This is where you are absorbing what the speaker is trying to say. You're actually soaking in the message that they're trying to convey. Hearing and listening are two very different processes. Listening is extremely important for a number of reasons. First of all, academically, students who listen to a lecture from their professor or their instructor will gain useful knowledge that they may be called upon to use later, such as with an exam. But professionally, it's also vital that you have good listening skills because employers and managers often hire people who they believe will be good listeners. And then once you have the job, you may be in line for a promotion because good listeners are often promoted on their jobs. So both personally and professionally, listening is extremely important. Selective listening is something that we all do from time to time. And that's basically listening to what we think might be important. For instance, if your parents are fussing at you about something that they've talked to you about in the past, you may just tune them out, meaning that you selectively listen to what they have to say. In other words, I don't want to hear that what you have to say anymore, so I'm just going to act like I'm listening, but I'm not really listening. That's selective listening. And we're all guilty of doing that from time to time. Now, selective perception is based on a person's values, their beliefs, or their experiences. So if you're listening to a presenter who is talking about something that you've never had an experience with before, or even want to have an experience with, you probably are not going to really listen to what they have to say. Or if the person has a different viewpoint or opinion than yours, then you may not listen to what they have to say as well because you think that what they have to say is irrelevant to you. Active listening is extremely important. It's a conscious act where you are focused on what the speaker has to say and you're actually getting the message that they're trying to convey. This is something that we're going to be asking of you for this class, active listening, because you will have to critique your classmates. And in order to do that, you must actively listen to their presentation. Now, it is virtually impossible to do that if they, there are distractions, whether they're internal or external. So, Avoiding distractions. One of the best ways to avoid distractions is to put your phone down. I'm just as guilty as everyone else is. I always have my phone in my hand. I'm always checking for text messages or email messages. I may be on Facebook or Instagram. Best thing to do is just put that phone away because that is a distraction from a pres what a presenter is trying to say. Next, you need to minimize your internal and your external distractions. What's, what's an internal distraction? That's thinking about other things than the speech, such as, what am I going to have for dinner this evening? I need to take the clothes to the dry cleaner. I need to run all of these errands. And you have all of these thoughts going in your head until you're not really concentrating on what the presenter is trying to say. 
external, these are things that are going on around you. If people are talking around you, if there's other noises in the background, all of these things can distract you from active listening. Something else that many people don't think about very often is cultural barriers. If you're listening to a presentation from someone who may be from another country, you may be listening to their accent instead of listening to what they have to say. So be aware of that. If you have any biases of this, of this particular type, you need to set those aside because those do interfere with active listening. Also, don't engage in defensive listening. Defensive listening is something that people do when someone takes a stance that is different from their own. And if a speaker gets up and they start making a presentation and you don't like the way that their presentation is going because it doesn't necessarily agree with your stand on a particular subject, then you may become defensive and you automatically stop listening to what that person has to say. So it's important that you leave those biases aside when you're trying to do active listening for presentations. And also, refrain from being lazy or overconfident when you're listening. Now, lazy listening is when you think you know what that person is going to say. You may be right, but you also may be wrong. So don't do that because that will take away from the effect of the presentation on you. Overconfident listening, that also kind of plays in with a lazy listening. I know exactly what you're gonna say, so why should I have to listen to anything that you have to say? You will miss valuable information in a presenter's speech if you are lazy or overconfident and just assume that you know what that person is going to say or what the next few words or sentences that may come out of that person's mouth are. As I said before, you might be right you might not be right. So take that into consideration when you're doing active listening. The best way to become a good active listener is to practice. You really need to just practice conscientiously listening to people making presentations. Some of the ways that you can do this, one, identify your listening needs. Now for this particular class, we're going to ask you to do critiques of your classmates. So your needs for this will be, what is the subject matter? What are the main points? Are the transitions good? Did the introduction catch my attention? Did the conclusion leave me wanting more? Also, you need to identify why listening is important. Again, Listening is important in this class because you will become critiquers. And just as someone will be critiquing your presentation, you will be critiquing someone else's. And so it's important that you have that active listening skill set while you're doing that. Make goals for yourself. What do I hope to accomplish by listening to this presentation? And then finally, determine if those goals have been met or not. Did I actually achieve what I set out to do while listening to this presentation? Main ideas are extremely important and that's something you're gonna hear repeated throughout this course. You need to listen for main ideas of a presentation. You listen for a preview of the ideas in the introduction. When you're about to give your presentation, you typically give you know, your main idea is this is what I'm going to be talking about. In order to make sure that you received the main ideas, you take notes while the person is making their presentation. That's always a good thing to do, to say, okay, this is point one, point two, and point three. And then when you're listening to the speech, make sure that the presenter actually covered point one, two, and three because if they didn't, that's something that you can include in your critique. You also can indent supporting points after your main points. 
For a lot of our speeches, you won't have supporting points because the speeches will be so short. But if they're longer speeches where they may be five minutes or so, you might have some supporting points as well. So when you do that and you're taking notes of whoever you're going to be critiquing, you can indent those supporting points under the main points. Finally, we want you to offer constructive and compassionate feedback. Now, as I've said before, all of you will be responsible for critiquing someone else in class. And for each of the speeches, it will be a different person. We want you to be honest, but we also want you to be fair. Now, how do you do that? Be positive in your comments. You may not have liked their speaking style. You might not have even liked their topic, but you can be fair and compassionate when you are given criticism. Don't shred them because remember, just as you're giving criticism to someone, someone else will be doing the same to you. You also need to adjust to the speaker's style. As I said, you may not like that speaker style at all. Each of us has different ways of making our presentations, but in order to do your critiques, you're going to have to adjust to the person that you're listening to. Also be positive with your criticism. Start off with, I really liked how you did A, B, or C. However, I think that if you did A, B, or C, this would be more constructive for your listeners because it will be easier for them to follow your presentation. So you're giving constructive criticism. You're letting them know, I really did enjoy this, but you might need to work on that. And you let them know why they need to work on that. And also, this goes kind of hand in hand with this. Be specific with your critique. Don't just say, great job. Let them know why. Let them know what you liked about it. Or, I think you really could improve your presentation if you do A, B, or C, because that will help them to become better presenters. Additionally, it will also help you to become a better active listener. That's all for now. Goodbye.